Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 604. Women, and Black Men and Women, Wait Longer at the ER for Diagnosis and Treatment of a Heart Attack. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about a very important piece of information and fact that has been studied now and um, printed in the Journal of Circulation, which is a cardiology journal, uh, where they did a small and then a much larger study to see if this was really true and they found it to be accurate, that when they looked at white men versus white women, black women, and black men, that white men got taken in and treated, diagnosed and treated with a heart attack faster than the rest of us. So it's not that they're being seen too fast, it's that we are being seen too slowly. The, um, even though heart attacks have declined, thankfully, over the last decade, uh, they have still been rising in young adults, which we used to not see, both men and women, and especially uh, men and women of color. So it's very important to know what the symptoms are and to know the facts about how most emergency rooms work. Now let me just stop this by saying that I, I grew up with a lot of sexism in terms of trying to get into med school, trying to um, be treated appropriately and equally in my residency program, trying to be treated normally and equally by other doctors of my age and older. Um, and it's, it is sexism and bigotry should not be in medicine. <laughs> this is something that should not be present at all, but it is because doctors, both men and women, are people. So, because of that, you have to not necessarily expect it, but consider it when you're sick. Now, women for a very long time uh, have been considered hysterical. No matter what, the way we respond to pain and sickness and surprise and anguish is that we get really upset, we cry, and we can't talk. And, and that makes men uncomfortable. So they have labeled us from the very beginning of time as hysterical. It's just that it's a response to these problems that they don't have. They don't feel like that, so they don't think it is normal, but it is normal for us. So they consider us hysterical, we're just complaining about something that's not there, we have imagined it, I've heard everything out of the mouths of mostly male doctors in the past 40 years. It is not right, and because I was a woman, I couldn't say anything about it to them. I would just have to go back to the patient and say, I'm sorry, that was really rude, and I'll take care of it, and I'll try to give you the care that you need. But that Band-Aid didn't always help, and it's still alive and well. And women in medicine um, are trained by men. There are more men, male teachers, and more male instructors in residency programs than women, partially because we take care of our children and we don't have, we don't have quite as much freedom in our, um, in, our pro, in our own lives to actually teach. So that's one of the reasons, and one of the reasons is they don't like to let us up there into the boys club. So that in itself is a problem. Same, same with bigotry and uh, black physicians and both men and women. And, that cripples us. So, I don't know how to, to treat or fix bigotry or sexism. I don't, except to kindly and gently in their face say, 
excuse me, I'm a human being. I'm, I'm not female or male. I'm a human being. I am female, but please treat me like you treat the men. White men. So that's the only thing I can think of to get past this. Well, the Journal of the American Heart Association tells us that the symptoms, and I know this from, from training in the ER, the symptoms um, of chest pain, chest pressure, chest tightness, burning in the chest, shortness of breath, left arm pain, passing out, can all be signs of a heart attack. And when a heart attack occurs, you need to know what that means. It means that there is not enough oxygen to the heart muscle. And the heart muscle works every day, 24 seven. It needs oxygen, it needs food, it needs to be supported. If your vessels are so blocked with cholesterol or uh, arteriosclerosis, you can't get enough oxygen. It's, like, it's just like making a, a pipe really tiny and then your blood pressure goes up and you can't push through these blockages. So your heart is starving for air. What happens when something starts starving for air? Well, in terms of the body, if you have your brain starving for air, your brain dies, parts of your brain die in that area. If you have your heart starving for air, for oxygen, then you have heart muscle dying. And the delay between men and the rest of us is 11 minutes. During that 11 minutes of delay between you come, getting into the ER, being diagnosed and treated, is actually causing your heart muscle to die for 11 minutes more than somebody else. I'll also say that if you sit at home and deny the fact you're having a heart attack, you're hurting yourself. That's no one's fault but your own. No, I don't. I have to fix dinner first. What? I, ha I mean, this is serious. You, if you have a heart attack, not only could you die, but war I consider it worse to be disabled by it. Have your heart muscle not work. Have your heart so damaged that you can't breathe walking across the room. It's important. It is more important than dinner, your child's birthday party, uh, your date. It is more important than anything that I can think of, except maybe a stroke, <laughs> that should rush you to the hospital. Call 911, or if you're close to the hospital, get somebody to drive you. But honestly, it is really important. So one of the things that we have to think about as women is, first, we may have different symptoms. Women often have nausea and back pain when they have a heart attack. It's a little different. It feels like, it feels almost like reflux or, or uh, heartburn. But it's not your heart, the heartburn is your stomach or your esophagus. This is your heart and it feels similar and sometimes women don't have that crushing heart, chest pain that men have. So it may feel different, it may not be characteristic, but you still have to listen to it. And the doctors and nurse practitioners at the hospital should be listening to it too they should know that there's a difference between men and women. We need to have an EKG just like the men. We need to have the, um, all of the heart tests, the cath, anything else that the men get, we should be getting as well. So um, diagnosis is key, and then getting treatment after that diagnosis is really important as well. If you are at home and you feel like you're having a heart attack, take an aspirin, a baby aspirin if you have it, the 81 milligram aspirin, will help break up any kind of clotting that may have attached itself to the uh, atherosclerosis in your heart, may help break it up and get more oxygen, but you still have to go to the hospital. <laughs> so um, in any case, the, um, the, you have to think about how old you are. If you're 18 to 45, you have a lower risk of having a heart attack, especially if you're a woman, because we have estrogen. The minute we have our ovaries removed, no matter what age that is, or when we have true menopause for any reason, then we go back up to the same risk as men unless we get our estrogen back in a non-oral treatment. So that means patches, gels, creams, vaginal suppositories, or pellets. So even though the risk of the general population who don't get who generally don't get hormonal replacement, uh, goes up after menopause, my patients don't have that same issue. So in fact, my cardiologist, 
when um, I have always had high cholesterol. I've said that before. Um, I, I went to my old cardiologist. He's now doing other things in administration. And I said, what, what else can I do to make my heart healthier? And he said, mm, you've done it all. Cholesterol is still high. You could go on a statin. And I, we've had this discussion before. And I said, nah, I'm not doing that. He said, well, that's the only thing you can do to decrease your risk. I said, how about a cardiac calcium scan? And he said, okay. And I said, okay, I, if I have a zero cardiac calcium scan, then, and I was 63 at that time. Uh, if I have a zero calcium scan, you're never going to say the word statin to me again, except that I don't need it. And he said, okay, that's a deal. So, so I got the cardiac calcium scan. I didn't know the results. And he called me and he goes, mm, I should have thought about it. You've been on estradiol in a pellet and testosterone in a pellet since you were 47, right? I said, right. And he goes, your vessels are clear. They're all clean. He said, too bad everybody doesn't do that. So it doesn't even matter what you, what your cholesterol is. It does matter if you've taken your female, female hormones, which are estradiol and testosterone. They both keep your arteries clean and your heart healthy. But for those of us who have not done that our whole lives, I mean, starting it later doesn't just erase everything that you've done up to the time you started. Um, we have to know that we're at higher risk once we hit that age uh, if we're not replaced. So when we, when we go in for this issue, either our partner or we have to say, I think I'm having a heart attack. I mean, you almost have to diagnose yourself to get moved on through into the emergency room. And we have to say, um, I've had this pain for so-and-so time. I took my aspirin at this time, you know, to kind of give them a history, but I still have this chest pain. I, you know, I, I need help. You have to admit that you need help and they, they should respond to that and not consider you hysterical. The calmer you get, uh, if you get too calm, they probably won't respond either. But if you're not hysterical, that's a good thing because then they'll deal with you kind of like they deal with you more like a guy. So this is important to get on with the treatment. Whatever treatment that is, you need to get on with it. And you need to get on with it faster. So remember, time is heart muscle. Your heart muscle decreases with a lo longer time between when you first get your symptoms and when you get treatment. So you don't want to damage that heart muscle. So take your aspirin, go to the ER, tell them, you, tell them what you think you have. If you're wrong, so what? You're not a doctor. You didn't know. It's okay. But these are the things we need to know. This is, it is a situation check. We have to wait longer. Black males, black females have to wait even longer. So you need to state your problem, not be too hysterical, but not be too calm. And have someone there as your spokesman if you can't do that to tell the, tell the ER doctor what to do and what to say and what they should say to the ER doctor. So protect yourself. Knowing these facts is power and you should use this to keep yourself healthy and not have damaged heart muscle. They can put stents in. They can, they can dissolve the plaque that's in the heart. They can do a bypass. You can be okay as long as you have good heart muscle. So... Please hear me, please remember, and I hope none of you has a heart attack. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.